Hello everybody, welcome to another issue of the COVID clinic. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with um, you guys. I know it is a trying time for the whole civilization. Um, in the last two, uh, one week, uh, I have had a large number of questions, worried parents um, asking whether, what is the risk that their children can have COVID and ac can actually die from it. There be newspaper reports of uh, young children, not super young, but 16, 17 years old who have died of COVID. Um, and uh, that has made headlines in newspapers. So this is obviously a very worrying uh, issue for most parents uh, who have young children. Now, uh, as you guys know, India is a young country. Almost 35.3% of its population, based on the 2001 census, is below 15 years of age. So that's a huge number. There are hundreds and thousands of people who are below 40 and they are having young children in the house, one, two, three. And these people have had COVID and they're worried. What is the chance that their children would have COVID? Now, that's a very interesting question. And in today's COVID clinic, I'll try to answer some of those questions. The very good news is, let me start from the beginning. Children tends to have very mild COVID. Very, very few children at all have moderate to severe COVID, which caused them to finally die. However, there are some caveats to this basic punchline. And let me go through those. So in children, for different reasons, which we will discuss today, in fact, that's very interesting to know scientifically the reason, because that may be a way by which we can find out how we can treat COVID in adults, which is, as you know, a severe disease sometimes and can actually kill people. So in children, it is known that um, COVID generally presents with mild symptoms, runny nose, slight fever, body aches, lasts for four to 10 days and then goes off without any major complication. Uh, in fact, when there were uh, thousands of people, um, lakhs of people in the US who were admitted with COVID, severe COVID and hundreds were dying the total number of pediatric cases was extremely small. Initially, it was counted to be around 1.7% only. And now it is believed the number is extremely small, even smaller than that, like 0.3%. You can almost count in your fingers how many children were actually admitted and had to be in ICU. A couple of children hospitals in the U.S. have actually said they had CCU, they had admission of COVID um, young kids, but almost nobody ended up in the ICU. So that's good news. And uh, the reason for that is um, because of two particularly important reasons. One is in young kids, the immunological system is not well developed. So how does that affect? As you know, as I have said many times in the past that um, COVID-19 is a disease of the coronavirus where the actual death happens not directly because of the virus, because of body's reaction to the virus. So the virus enters the body and then takes over the body, produces hundreds and thousands of virus of its own kind and body is completely taken for a ride. It is fooled. But when the body realizes that it has been taken over and it has become a virus producing factory, it re reacts back. Unfortunately, in some people, the reaction is violent. There is a cascade of different deadly chemicals that is released in the body like interleukin-6, interleukin-1b, TNF-alpha. <clears throat> These chemicals are deadly and devastating. They cause ravage within the body, damaging and destroying the lung causing the heart to um, become thin, paper-like and massively big. The normal size of a heart is the size of your fist. So your heart is as big as your fist and that heart becomes like a huge balloon. So there is uh, affection of the heart, there's affection of the kidneys, there's affection of the brain. Massive large arteries of the brain are blocked in seconds because there is formation of clot which blocks blood flow, causing severe stroke, which kills people. <clears throat> the good news is none of these happens in young kids because their 
immunity is not that developed where they can launch such a massive reaction against the virus. So that's one way a good news. So most people will be infected if at all they are, get uh, over with the virus in a couple of days to weeks with little or no symptoms at all or very mild symptom as if they have caught some common cold. Some exception may be completely newborn child because they have very small lung and uh, the, the lung pathways that carry air is also extremely small. So even mild inflammation in them can cause them to have respiratory distress and these patients may need immediate admission um, to be taken care of. But in general, even in houses where there have been COVID cases amongst adults, the children do get COVID, but the COVID is generally not severe. The chance of getting COVID varies among place to place, but in places that have got big, um, big attacks like Northern Italy, China, United States, America, most kids between uh, one to five years of age, only 11% or maybe even smaller in some cases were found to be severely ill. <clears throat> But the older kids, like 10, 11, the number of infection and severe infection is extremely low, maybe even 5% or even lower than that. So that's good news. Most of the younger people in our homes in India who are young, um, below 17 years of age, generally the chance of having COVID, getting sick from COVID, getting into the CCU or dying is extremely low. Uh, despite the fact that we are having massive transmission and today India ranks third in the world after US and Brazil with the most number of cases. Now, the other uh, important thing also to understand in young kids, especially those um, less than one year of age or even after that is the re one of the reasons why they don't get COVID that drastically and with such massive reaction that finally kills people is because there are very few points from where the COVID virus can enter the body. As you know, COVID virus enters the body through what is known as the ACE2 receptors. These are like small doors that gets opened up by the COVID virus. But COVID virus first has to attach to these receptors or doors as we can call it. <clears throat> now, if you have very few ACE2 receptors like young kids, the chance of COVID virus attaching to some receptors like this and getting inside the body is extremely rare. Certainly rare than older people and adults who have hundreds and thousands of ACE2 receptors in their lung, in their heart, in their blood vessels, in their brain. So it's much more difficult for, a, for the virus to get in and settle inside the body and starts its, uh, its dangerous play that finally kills people. So that's the other good news and that's where now research is going on to see if we can find out some sort of a AR, uh, ACE2 receptor blocker uh, which might prevent the virus from entering the cell in the first place. So even if there's COVID all around you, you'll never get infected. Uh, but research is going on. We don't have much on that account uh, for now. So we'll keep you updated as we pass through an important landmarks comes um, uh, for us to know about COVID. In the next uh, episode, I'm going to talk about the vaccine. I've had hundreds and thousands of questions on what is the latest vaccine? When can you have, when can we have one? So my next talk will be on what are the different vaccines that are being worked up in India in the US, in the UK, what are the frontline vaccine, what stages of development they are, and uh, obviously rationally how effective they will be in stemming this pandemic that has already killed thousands and thousands of people all over the world. Thanks for watching me. Um, <clears throat> don't hesitate to get back to us with more questions. It's your questions that make us write to you and talk about those important topics. Hope to see you soon. Take care and keep yourself safe from COVID. Thanks. Bye.